Hello everyone and welcome back to Super Mario Bros. Wonder. It's almost finale time, but this time it's for the final boss. Can you guess what Nintendo did for their boss design? It's uh, Bowser. Yes, but what's the You're Nintendo's boss on the flagpole. Wait, hold on. Uh, Ganondorf comes in and is actually the final boss out of nowhere. That'd be funny, but no. Is it Bowser Jr. again? No, thankfully. Is Bowser sitting in a hot tub? <laughs> it's a head and two hands, damn it. <laughs> Is Bowser playing shower with your dad? Uh, Did someone say something about a fisting? <laughs> that seemed to work so much better for Eggman. All right, Kamek's in this game. A pointless auto scroller, which really should have not been an auto scroller. It, it kind of reminds me of like how some castles in Mario World had like that slow auto scroller with like the giant pistons. Yeah. Only these are giant flaming fists. Well, this is them trying to do like all the wonder effects in the game. They've done. Was oh, that this. what's going on? Okay, yeah, it's been a while. The previous couple levels also had stuff like that, where you would scroll through all the different wonder effects. Oh, they would go back and forth over the course of the whole stage. Well, that thing's insta kill. Wow. I, I like that you have the option to change badges when you die. Oh yeah, no, it's great. Um, because you can try different things. If like, oh, if I have this one badge, I could. I think I could do X Y Z to get up there. It's such a cool feeling in these kinds of games. But nothing kills your excitement to try new stuff. Then. Having to quit the stage, uh, load back to the menu, put on a new power up, and then go back into the stage again after that. So I'm really glad that every time you die, you can switch which badge you're on. It's a really great quality of life feature. I like how the flower is there to tell you where to stand. Oh, that is a really uh, good. <laughs> Clearly, not a fan of flowers. I mean, you're going to be watching the flower, or at least half watching it, thinking, oh, the, the punchline is the flower gets gets crushed, right? But no, the flower is just like in the perfect spot. <laughs> the joke if is you're you. looking at the flower while that, because this is an auto scroller, they're able to do this. When you see the thingy go uh, rolling back and forth, you can see that the flower is where the safe spot is. So it makes it a little easier to visually tell where you're supposed to stand. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I'm I think we've alluded to in previous parts in the commentary was that you can turn the flower off. Uh, you can turn the voices off. They'll still you can turn like... the voices off. Okay, okay. So th that answers the question I was going to ask them because, like, does that physically remove the flower or does it just shut them up? Yeah, it just shuts them up. Their like speech bubbles will still appear. Okay. I didn't do that. I thought I would end up. I thought I was going to because I, at first I found the flower kind of annoying because of how frequently they spoke. That's more just uh, a beginning of the game thing. Just yeah, that, that that's exactly there. what it is. But I warmed up to the dude like pretty fast afterwards because I found him pretty endearing. Uh, that said, they he will guilt trip the shit out of you if oh, you they do it uh, all the time. attempt to turn him off. Because if you highlight the turn off uh, feature, he will say, was it something I said? <laughs> I was like, oh, f fuck off. <laughs> I can't wait for him to be put into a Mario sports game and they have to find a way to make this guy play sports um, without telekinesis. Cause... No, 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 because if a, if a Goomba can do it, no matter what. Yeah, they and then they got the rid flower. of the Goomba telekinesis because they've yeah, never but done didn't a Mario you also, sports game But again. didn't you also say that that was a detriment to that game? So why don't they bring it back? No, it's not a detriment. I love that Mario uh, Baseball has such a wide and varied roster. I mean, if you're no, doing I mean, didn't you? Um, I thought we had a sports tangent. I yeah, know the commentary. I, I think he was talking about one of the one, one of the later ones not being as. Yeah, fun. that's what I mean, and I think like one of the reasons why you say you didn't like it as much is because they removed the Goomba's telekinesis or some other shit. Uh, I uh, no, they, there's telekinesis in both games. I said I probably made a crack about them removing it, and it's the worst thing Nintendo would ever did, but. No, the Mario baseball on Wii. I know, I know for a fact that Ted said more than that because I was going through the comments 
uh, a couple parts back, and there were these and there were these really annoying people who were really ragging on him for not knowing that there was a specific mechanic in the game. I forget what mechanic, and I've never played Mario Baseball in any form, so it doesn't mean anything um, to me. This is also a game that I haven't played in ten years. Uh, if we can go back to our touch grass combat. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, charge! <laughs> I love these flowers. Also, I love the worm pipes. I don't know what it is about them. They're just charming. Oh, the background there is shaped like Bowser's face. I actually never noticed that before. Wow. Mm. Dude, this game's great. He learned a lot from that crossover with Sonic the Hedgehog, didn't he? All right, let's see. Um, uh, what, what, yeah. what, what are we doing here? So the rhythm We're learning how to fight the final boss by practicing it here. <laughs> Yeah, the Rhythm Jump minigame from World 4 is randomly the final boss uh, <laughs> mechanic for some reason. What the shit? That is so fucking weird. It is weird. I agree. Oh, um, Bowser, are you sure you want to fight me with that hairdo? Listen, he's going to do a brain blast. He's going to uh, brain on that blast. <laughs> going to blast all over that brain. Blast all over that brain or some. I don't know how the meme goes. Okay. In my uh, rage stage. Okay. I get it. Yeah. Hit it. Um, okay. So um, Bowser really wanted to get in on that head in two hands action, I guess. That's what. That's, that's kind of where I'm at. Like, I, I ultimately find this battle harmless. I, I think it's by... Process of elimination, the most interesting boss, although there's not much competition uh, yeah, it, it, there. It's the best boss in the game by by yeah. process of elimination. Uh, but that said, when I saw this, I did actively roll my eyes. I was like, <laughs> "Dude, it's the giant head with two hands again." Yeah, it's like I think they could have done again. I I mentioned this at the beginning of the playthrough. I don't know, but I just I don't know what it is about Mario 2D Mario that makes boss fights so hard for them to to do. Because, like, this boss fight's fine. Like, if this were, like, a second or third boss, I think it'd be neat. But for the final boss, it's pretty underwhelming. This this fight is carried more for its aesthetic than it is actual mechanics. Because, again, yeah. me mechanically, it's a it's a fine boss. It's, it's just... It's just Jesus. it's fine. There's not really yeah. much there, though. I do, I do like them, like, trying to go for the Splatoon vibe, though. Because I was reminded of DJ Octavio. What the fuck was oh, that Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oh, DJ Octavio also does the, the two hands thing. Oh, oh I never know. Oh, God. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm just, like, not really feeling the musical Andros theme. Um... I mean, music has been a theme throughout the game, you know, with all the musical stages and whatnot. So I get what they're going for. And when you're watching the the like the actual like gameplay, without only actually I playing. have the Riz to rule, Lilat. <laughs> no, no, you don't. Andros is Nintendo's Rizless. <laughs> no, Rizless. I'm not. I'm not okay. least charismatic villain. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's more syllables than Rizless, though. I think you. Yeah, but it sounds way less stupid. So I'm going with that. Most Rizless was the phrase you were trying to say originally, but. <laughs> yeah, but then you're using an adverb for an adverb, and with like adverbs are bad, is what everybody has told me in in writing school so adverb for an adjective anyway yeah like, i mean adver that... adverbs are bad is one of the is one of the most like misunderstood uh rules of thumb in writing it's more just that overusing adverbs specifically for dialogue gives everything a very passive feeling yeah it's 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 one of again adverbs are a tool much like most things they're usually very few bad tools just bad application of tools for example, the sentence, he walked angrily to the door, is pretty boring. Uh, he stomped his feet as he moved towards the door, uh, sweat dripping and his eyes bulging from his head. While poorly written, because that was a first pass I did off the top of my head, evokes the emotion in a more interesting way than just saying, yo bro, he angy. 
He ate yeah. me, man. <laughs> and that, that that really is that really is kind of the rule of thumb that should be remembered. It's not don't use adverbs, but rather whenever you're tempted to use an adverb, ask yourself if there's a more interesting way you could say that adverb that doesn't involve using the adverb. So one cool thing I only just noticed is that when the music note piranha plants are coming by you, the background has the wavy lines to make it look like a music bar uh, for sheet music, which is a neat touch. I like that quite a bit. You Boss know, fight's still pretty mid, though. <laughs> you know, head and four hands isn't much isn't much different from head and two hands. You, you see, there, there's like the, the meme words of like, oh, forehead. You know, uh, his forehand just doesn't... Well, there's a forearm, but there's no forehand. I think the insult you're looking for is five head. I thought it was forehead first, and then people... No, it's five head. It's five head? But mm -hmm. didn't that come from people saying forehead? I never heard forehead as an insult. Uh, I have. I've heard, of four, I've heard of four eyes as an insult, but not, like, forehead. I have, but only in Naruto. Uh, because, um... Well, because they have so much real estate. Oh, forehead. So forehead is um is a emote from. That's what I was thinking of. Forehead is an emote from Twitch of that guy with the stupid face going like. Eh. So that's why people would then write out forehead like owls like oh you're being idiot and then that changed to five head because the internet makes no goddamn sense. Uh, and what becomes <laughs> listen. I like five head more than forehead though because of how nonsensical it is. I, I, w I saw a post about this, and I've been thinking about it ever since, where somebody mentioned, oh, remember in, like, 2013, where we thought calling Cory in the house an anime was the funniest thing ever? And I'm like, I do remember that. I don't remember how it started and wh or why it's funny. But at the time, it was indeed really funny. <laughs> uh, I have no idea how that started either. In fact, what's happening to Bowser now is a perfect representation of me trying to figure that out. Um, I want to plug that. I up. think it's directly Johnny's fault for reviewing uh, Cory in the House for the Nintendo DS. Oh, uh, you see, I didn't review that game for the meme, though. I reviewed that game because it was donated to me. Yeah, and then it started the meme. I think it's no. directly your. No, fault. the meme was already well established by the time I got to it. Oh well, then they probably sent it to you because it was a meme. Yeah, that's exactly it. Okay. I could have sworn you did that video before the Cory in the House meme started. Now, no. you, you'd be surprised how many long-standing memes it takes ages and ages and ages to cross your desk. Uh, you see, that's why people will be like, oh man, you, you brand accounts. You don't know that this meme's dead? And it's like, yeah, because these people have lives. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, they're, they're at work right now. <laughs> Trying to connect with the youths of today. So these are our grand stars? Yep. They look like Eat ice cream cones, food. actually. I want one. <laughs> they do. Uh, the... I like how I like them all coming out at the end so that you can just show off your entire collection. That's not really something you got out of the grand stars, was it? No, because you threw them into the big glowy orb, and then it made your thing. I do like in Mario Galaxy how the orb continues to get brighter after each grand star you get. And... <laughs> Aren't you just feeling the sun? I just rescued this grand star. Its little eyes are staring at me. Now I'm going to milk it dry like a Matrix battery. I mean, that's literally what you do with the, the Lumas. <laughs> like, the Lumas are, are baby stars, and then they turn into, like, a launch star to launch Mario to the next planet. And then they just sit there for the rest of their existence. You know what, though? Like, d despite not having a scene where you collectively see all of the Grand Stars that you collected, I always love, like, how after you got a Grand Star, the scene that followed immediately was you and the Grand Star flying back together to the observatory. Dude, Mario Galaxy's just peak video game. That... Uh, that game's amazing. Yeah, it's a shame they never made any more Mario games after that one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a shame they haven't made a Mario game since 2000. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They should really get off. It's really, that. really fucking weird. Yeah, uh, Mo Mother 3 came out in 2008, so really it's been sooner <laughs> since we've had an Earthbound game than a Mother than a Mario game. So is there like a reward for getting all of the credits lit up? 
Yeah, you unlock Sonic and Tails for uh, <laughs> versus mode. <laughs> I thought you had no, that was no, that was Toad. That was Toad, Melee. right? If yeah, because you, you had to get credits, twenty cruel, Toad. cruel smash kills in order to get Sonic and Tails. Uh. Well, I did suppose... any of you guys actually manage to get twenty cruel no. smash kills? I got no. fifty-seven. So Ooh. I got I got six. And it was just Jigglypuff, Prey, and Spray. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard anybody call it that. <laughs> well, Prey and Spray is just a, a, a gun terminology, but it's it, essentially what I'm doing is that I'm, I'm trying to use rest and trying to get the critical hit and praying that I don't miss. Because if I do, it's over. I, you know, as a kid, I never knew what rest did because it just, I didn't know about that. Like, one. Yeah, that's a combo move. Like, you have to set up sleep first before you can actively do it. Well, I mean, that's what you're intended to do anyway. Wait, what are you intended to do with rest? The, so the the intended combo for Jigglypuff and Smash Brothers is obviously you're supposed to use this, uh, the, the sleep uh, to knock your opponent out, and then you can comfortably use rest on them. Oh, oh, the, I forgot that Jigglypuff had a lullaby. Yeah. Because <laughs> I never see anyone use it. That was Jigglypuff's entire thing in Gen 1. I know, but it's so bad. The thing is, is that the sleep doesn't last long enough to Wait, do it. is that what they were doing? I thought they were just singing badly. That's like forgetting that Pikachu is an electric mouse. Come on. Listen, I haven't played Smash Brothers in a long time, all right? It's been... Or Pokemon, I guess, for that matter. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because Lullaby <laughs> sucks. Move never works. It depends. Like, it doesn't. No, it doesn't hypnosis. move. It, it doesn't. It has like a fifty-five percent hit rate. It's not worth using. 50. Wasn't there a way you can increase the accuracy of hypnosis in uh, like Gen uh, Two? There's uh, moves or there. items you can hold to increase your accuracy. Period. But hypnosis is base um, accuracy. I'm just saying least. because the AI seems to have a hundred percent. Oh, of course it does because it. it cheats. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I, I, uh, I don't know what you're saying. Like you don't want to use sleep moves because that's the best way to catch a Pokemon. Is no, yeah, no. You use sleep moves. You use sleep powder, which has a 75 percent chance, which is much better than 55. Okay, fair. Yeah, I, I do. I do use Butterfree for that most of the time. Yeah, you you get Butterfree and pa oh, what you do is you get Paris, who has Spore, which is the only uh, 100 percent accurate sleep it, move. Was Paris like a version specific one in Gen One? I don't think so. It's just a little hard to get if you don't know, because I believe the only place you can find it early game is in Mount Moon, but specifically in like those weird narrow corridors in Mount Moon between the middle, the main floor and the top floor. Yeah, that's if you want to get it as soon as possible. Yeah. Otherwise, you're waiting to Safari Zone. All right. I remember how old RPGs used to design this shit. Oh, Jesus. The water just turned into lava. It's still swimming it, though. I, for some reason, I looked at uh, the name popped up on screen, Patrick si Seats, and my brain just went, Patrick Stewart's in another video game? <laughs> I thought Patrick Star. <laughs> uh, Wait, is Patrick Seats in this game? That's what it said. Well, what was what the what was he doing? <laughs> I, don't I don't remember. I didn't see the credit. That, that it what was does he typically to. do? He's Villains? usually... Oh, yeah, uh, he was Dracula in um, the the more recent Castlevania games. He's Dio in the English dub with jo JoJo. Wait, uh, which more recent Castlevania game? Like what? Uh, uh, was it, yeah. When I say more recent, I mean like starting with like Dracula X Chronicles and the oh, PSP. Okay, he's that deep voice motherfucker. He's the deep voice Dracula. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think he's really good in the role, though. To be fair, I, I like him as Dracula. Yeah, he's good. The directing could be better though. Yeah, I, I guess Netflix Castlevania spoiled me with, with, with voice actors. Um, Oh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to go back after hearing that Dracula performance. Okay, okay. I don't get paid enough for this shit. <laughs> Maybe I should. Why are you still here? You know, you don't have to be part of BSA. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking more about <laughs> Kamek. Uh, wow, I hope that job gave... Uh, it included a life insurance policy. And we all Bowser needs to get a better <laughs> mechanic for those things. <laughs> okay, that flower was the perfect and was the perfect uh last note to go out on. It's the first and last flower you see. The end, but we have a part well, left. 
I was gonna say unless you go on. Man, I wonder room, what there could five. be that would cause there to be an extra part. Oh no. It's time for that level that's gonna make us all pull our hair out, isn't it? I am glad that Mario has these uber challenge levels at the end of the game in almost every game now. Um it does it does kind of stand stick out as a bit of a teaser though for those players who enjoy really tough platforming because um uh I get the feeling that the the players most likely to enjoy the Grandmaster Galaxies and all of that are um are the kind of players who would really much prefer the entire game to be overall more challenging you can say masochist it's fine yeah i mean to be fair uh that's why i like that the special world is broken up between all of the worlds in this game so the people who really like those extremely tough challenges get, get them sprinkled throughout they're not just waiting till the end of the game to get something to to scratch that itch for them yeah. i mean because I think it would be bad pacing and bad for the casual player experience if the game difficulty ratcheted up immediately. Yeah. Like, there's some games that do that. Like, if I remember correctly, Crash 4, the optional, like, uh, VHS tape levels, those are really hard right from the get-go, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so if you're, like, you know, a 10-year-old kid playing that for the first time, uh, that might be disheartening to find and not be able to do right away. Like, you can continue on with the rest of the game, I suppose. But um, I, I like the way that Mario Wonder handles its difficulty. I think it's well designed. I don't necessarily think it's bad for a for an, for a challenge that you aren't obligated to complete right now to be disheartening, though. Because uh, depending on the player, and this is always going to be subjective because everyone's got a different personality. But depending on the player, it gives you something to look forward to as you get better. 